Hello all and welcome to the channel all about economic board games. Today I am bringing you a run through of speculation. We've got the designer at the top here and it's brought to us by these guys at the bottom. If you're after a shorter insight on this one, check out my video I brought you guys last week. So this plays three to six players, it says it takes about 45 minutes, which I think is about right. And it's that light complexity and we're heading to the stock market this is a pure stock market game we've got eight different companies and they all kind of have names familiar to games by queen games and most of them have been created by the publisher the, the uh, publisher and the designer themselves and what we're trying to do here is manipulate these eight companies and purchase their shares sell their shares and make as much profit as possible as they make their way along this path now the board here is kind of mirrored so you'll notice there's information at the top that's kind of missing but that's irrelevant because we're looking at all this information here so if there were many players around the board you could see the the prices that side as well so we've got all our money denominations here we've got the shares here and i'm playing a free player game today there is just myself as usual and in terms of the number of shares it's the number of players minus one so there's two shares of each company available each player starts with 20 money and you will have a deck of cards and in this deck i'm not going to reveal it but there is one card of each share type and one bank holiday card which hopefully i'll get a chance to show you that one <clears throat> so diving straight in then the first thing we're going to do the first player last person to have traded a stock is going to pick from this bag let me get all the numbers uh, and, and, and I'm only just using the one bag here. The, the, the game recommends the two bags provided. In one bag, you provide these action tokens. And in the other bag, which I might as well show you now, is these sort of numbered tokens. Now, I tend to put them in one bag. And you can kind of feel that you're going to pick one of these circular ones and one of these square ones. Now, what are these before we, we move on? You've got three of these tokens which allow you to trade if one of them comes into play. And you, you have to start with one of those in the opening round. So I'm going to leave one aside. And then these will basically let that active player move one of these stocks, and they're represented by these sort of chits here, down one place, and that'll make more sense, and plus one upwards, and this one is no action happens. And the numbers dictate on the second type of part of the, the round when you play the cards as to the movement of the shares. But I think I'm just going to go in and sort of demonstrate as we, uh, as we play, really. Okay, so we've already got the action selected. Let's just say this player here, you might not be able to see quite in the camera view all their stuff, and they're going to pick out a number, so a circular one. So we know that we're doing trade in this round, and it's a number three. So starting with this player here, active player, they get to buy and or sell one share now they start with a share that was randomly chosen from the bag and each player's got one of those so they're in the blue game the starting shares are worth 20 bucks each you can see in this little zone 20 20 bucks so they've only got 20 so are they going to sell this share for 20 maybe buy something else there's very limited information out there with the exception of these deck of cards you've got you've revealed the top two only you can see these and they can see that they've got a red and a yellow so maybe we're just going to go okay we're going to buy a red share there's one available boom we know that an opponent is invested in that red share so they might want to help us out so we're going to buy that we're going to pay our 20 and that is it. They've bought a share. They could sell one if they want. And you can do in any order you want. You could sell something to generate the money to then purchase something. But that's all we're going to do for now. And remember, these would be secret. Over clockwise then, so I guess uh, it would actually come full swing back here. These guys are thinking, okay, I'm going to buy... Well, let's look at their cards. So they've got Timbuktu and Karat. So they're going to buy a Timbuktu share. There's two available. Boom, they take that one and they're going to pay the 20. Now, I don't see why you'd maybe want to sell that card, sell one of those shares now, but um, this is probably what I would do. Over to the next player. They are going to buy, let's have a look at their cards, Shogun. They're going to go for a green one. So they take that share, pay their 20. 
So that was literally the first phase. You've carried out this action. And remember, that has to be a trade in the first round. We then look at the number. Now, what happens now is everyone's looking at those two cards secretly. And I'll kind of got them all revealed here just so you can see. And everyone is going to pick one. And this is going to influence that particular share price. So these guys are probably going to go for the red one. They'll keep this other one just next to them. These guys are going to go for green. And these guys are going to go for this sort of navy, this lighter blue one. So what would happen then is once everyone's chosen, simultaneously you would reveal them. So I kind of put them out here just to, to show what we got. And then starting with the active play and going clockwise, you're going to move that share based on this number and you can see the share uh, numbers here it goes all the way up to 60 which is the end of the game they're going to kind of follow this zigzag path and the price of them is based on the matching line so this color if, if your share is on this track here from 1 to 10 you're looking at this share price here if it's on this sort of slightly darker tinge it's going to be this one so you can see the prices match up to the the lines above so start with the active player then they've chosen a red one it's going to move three spots so one two three done this goes in their discard pile these guys chose orange why did they choose orange when they've got green and yellow? Okay, we've, we've gone with orange anyway. Uh, or did they want Shogun? Actually, I think they went with Shogun, didn't they? Okay. So, Shogun is going to move three. One, two. So, you have to move three empty spaces. So, they're actually going to surpass that one. Boom, they're ahead in share value three. That goes to their discard pile. Over to these guys. So, they've got the blue one. And that is one, two, three. And again, three empty spaces. It actually surpasses them all. So everyone's played their card. That is the end of the round. You would take a card from the top of your deck. You don't know what it is. And you've got your discard pile. And you've got your active deck. And now you can see a, a new snippet of information for the next round. Active player. These go back in the bag. So if there's ever a trade symbol, it goes back in the bag with the number and let's just say these guys the active player and they are going to pick a circle and a square one as an action we've got another trade round here but with a number four this time so what are they going to do they're going to buy and sell they can see now that the value of their timbuk two share here so these are their shares in the red and how this works is you look at the order so it goes they are first that they're, 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 they're furthest ahead and this just relates to the entire sort of zigzag track you know if they were all the way here they're still first so what have we got first second third and then these are kind of all last and what that means is these are first so you look at the track so they're in this row this uh, column should we say they're worth 100 greens are worth a second at 90 and reds are at 80 all the others are still valued at 20 because they're in this zone but let's just say blue was in just managed to really get far ahead because that was a six maybe and they can see now they're in this column so they're still number one out of the eight shares they're 125 whereas this green one is second in this track if green happened to be there they're second in this track so 110 so you can see the differences in prices as you go along and that's what you're kind of looking for so these players are thinking okay i'm just going to sell they're going to sell timbuk2 it's valued at 100 and you can see they they bought it for 20 and they've now got 100 bucks are they so they've, they've done their one sell are they going to buy something they're probably thinking okay let's go with green it's it's second there and that is going to well actually why would they buy green when there's all these 20s maybe they're going to go and buy yellow 20 because they're looking at the cards maybe not actually we're going to go carrot because they have got a carrot card so they've got some slight information there they're going to buy this for 20 let's get some change there so you can see already they've got two shares and 80 bucks where they only started with 20. these guys then are buying and selling or you don't have to and they're looking at the cards going okay i can influence yellow and they've got a yellow share and i've got an orange share maybe they're just going to buy an orange share for 20. oh did those guys buy anything yeah they did didn't they they bought the carrot and they sold one yet that's why so these guys haven't sold yet but they've bought for 20 oh they haven't got any money so we're going to need to sell i think we're going to sell the shogun one so it's second in line that's going to get the 90 okay did i do that right yeah 90 so they've sold that back 90 bucks and now they're going to buy that orange 
and that's going to cost them 20. Now, I might make some glaring mistakes because it's only me trying to play free players as usual. Okay, so that's their money. So they sold the green and they have bought an orange. So interestingly, buying and selling doesn't actually influence the price like you would think in a stock market game. It's the, the play of these cards and it's it depends what this sort of action allows you to do as well, which is interesting sort of choice of uh, mechanics in this game. So they've done their buying and selling over to these guys and they are thinking, right, I've got no money. I've got Gary, which is still worth 20, and my red is third rank, which is 80. I'm going to need to generate some money, so they're going to sell that for 80. And to be fair, I should have probably looked at the hand. Yellow and Metro, so they're going to go and buy a Metro for 20. And so they're in, they're in the profit. <clears throat> okay, next thing we do, active player is these guys. It's going to move four. Everyone simultaneously picks a card. So let's just say they're going to go with carrot. And I put it on the top of the discard pile just so I kind of don't get confused of all these cards. These guys are going to go for the yellow card. And these guys are equally going to go for the yellow card. But they don't know that. So you'd all reveal. And this is the active player. So they're going first. The number's four. So carrot is going to move four. One, two, three, four. It's a head. And over to yellows, they're going to move four. One, two, three, four. Wow, yellows are now ahead. And it's yellows again out of four. So one, two, three, four. So you can see how the market has suddenly just changed massively. Okay, so that was the end of that. Because it's a trade symbol, these all go back in the bag. And the bag represents the active player. So it comes to these guys. You would draw from the top. Remember, these would be secret normally. Oh, we've got a bank holiday, and I'm going to try and show, demonstrate that now for you. So active player will again take a square one. Now we've got a trade. I want to, I want to show you some of the other actions. So I'm going to kind of cheat here and try and let's get the, let's get one of these pluses out, and let's say it was a two. So let's demonstrate this particular one here. Plus ones come out. These guys are the active player. What this allows them to do is there's no trading. You can't buy and sell. But this one player can move one stock of their choice and it goes up a level. And what that means is it goes beyond uh, one of the shares in front of it. Now, these guys are thinking, okay, I'm invested in yellow and orange. This orange hasn't moved yet. So they're going to go along to the next empty space after the first share they come upon, come across. So it's red. But hold on, there's no empty space after it. And there's no empty space after that. The next available empty space after this first share in the way is here. So that's a great move. They've actually bumped orange up all the way to there. So that's what this action is about. Now, you would leave this out of the bag. And it'll make sense when that comes back into play. We don't do any buying and selling because we didn't get that particular tile. We now go over to sort of phase two of the round, which is dealing the number two. So everyone, again, picks one of these cards. I'm not going to think too hard. These guys are just going to go green. And remember, these are secret. They're going to go red. But these guys are going to play Bank Holiday. <coughs> Reveal the cards, and it would be these three here. These guys are the active player, but in a, what is it, a 3-4 free four, free four player game, the bank holiday sort of ceases trade. It's a, you know, it's a bank holiday. So these cards are redundant. They can't be played. Red can't move. Green can't move. In a 5-6 player game, it would be, if one of these are revealed in a 5-6 player game, it would be half the value of this, and you continue. But if two bank holidays are revealed, then in a 5-6 player game, it would actually be a, bit, a bank holiday. Now, each of these decks only has one of these in them. So you might want to sort of keep it for the opportunist moment when you've got these two cards, like, right, I'll play a green, and you'll wait to use it. But we've just sort of demonstrated what that does. So this goes on the side. So these don't go back in the bag until a trade token has come out, and that's being used. So they're going to stay out here. We all reveal back up from the top of our deck making sure that's secret and these guys are now the active player so let's see what we've got now the, I'm, I'm just going to reveal the other action because there is only three um three actions is the trade we've shown this minus one would do the opposite of this plus green so if this player happened to get this one and they didn't like the look of what have we got maybe the reds because they didn't want their opponent to do well well reds aren't really going to go anywhere here let's say yellow this yellow would add, oh wow if this player did choose yellow and they had this minus one, it has to go back uh, to the, the next empty space before the level before, before them. So 
this uh, carrot one here so that let's remind ourselves they're on 12 so they go back no there's no empty space and there's still no empty space so they actually go all the way back to two if that player decided to do that so you can see the power in, in in acquiring those and the final one which i mentioned at the beginning is a sort of little egg timer which is nothing happens when that's revealed so let's carry on and just do one or two more rounds so we're going to reveal a square one we have got the minus one and we're going to pick a circle number five so it was these guys are active player they're looking at the hand now they've got a metro share which hasn't gone anywhere and they've got a carry one which is sitting pretty here they've got a metro and an alhambra card to play so metro could be a nice one it's going to go at five and they're going to be first to do so unless anyone else plays a bank holiday and what they're going to do with their minus one they're going to play it on yellow so literally the next available space before the share uh, before them it's going to be all the way down here that is a big shame and there wasn't the opportunity to sell the yellow shares for this player because this action came out okay so they've utilized that they keep on the side for now now over to number five so everyone's going to um choose their card these guys are going to go for that one they're going to go for orange <coughs> these guys are going to go for well they don't like either but they're going to have to play one so starting of these players metro is going to go at five one two three four five and you can see now metro's in the game uh, and going clockwise we have got green and they're gonna go one two three four five greens ahead now and finally over to these guys orange one two three four five boom these stay out here for now poor browns that they're left at the end there and we would take a card from the top and just remember these would be secret active player comes around they're going to draw out of the bag and if this is a trade i'll probably do the last one so we got the big number six and we have got a trade okay so these guys can now buy and sell so they're looking and thinking right i'm gonna go right into this one that's 20 bucks they got the money done are they going to sell one now carrot is red here carrots there they're going to hold on to those for now uh, but in terms of the value, though, let's just give you a demonstration. Carry them. So one, two, three, four back. It's on this particular column. That's 70 bucks. Red, one, two, three, four, five, six back. It's going to be valued at 50. Now, looking at these prices, some of them are negative, which I'm kind of hiding here. If they're negative and you buy them, you actually get paid to take that share on. But if you're trying to sell, obviously, you're going to have to pay that money uh, to sell it. And the reason you might want to do that is because if you're holding on to one of these shares that, that's sitting at the back, by the time you get to here, it's actually going to get worse in value. So it's going to go from minus 10 to minus 30 to minus 40. So it might actually be better getting rid of it at minus 10. But then you don't know how shares, if they're all sort of clustered together, playing that one move might up it from, you know, eighth all the way to second and suddenly that minus 10 stock is worth 210 so real fluctuations in this market okay where were we so these guys buying and selling <clears throat> so they're looking at their cars they're thinking okay i've got a potential brown one to come out here and it's a number six and they're going to be first and they've got a brown share you know this could really bump a pie so they're going to keep hold of that maybe they're just going to buy the other one at 20 because neither of these two are doing particularly well they're going to do that so they're going to they're going to buy that for 20 what did i do theirs already did i buy that for 20 i'm not sure oh i did yeah because i paid 20 okay so you can only buy one thing selling they're not going to do it's over to these guys and they've also got a brown share and they've seen those guys buy them and they're thinking you know what we could without saying to each other this might be the winning move so they're equally going to buy that for 20 they are going to sell this orange. They're getting hot feet, cold feet, should we say. So this orange, number one in this column, 125 bucks back. Okay. These guys have a bank holiday. They could ruin everything. They've seen these guys buy the, the brown shares, and they're thinking, you know what, I could scupper this. But they've got an orange one as well, and maybe there's a six, and they want to get ahead. I think it was these guys who are the active players. So they're actually going to be last We'll see how that pans out. They're not going to play the bank holiday, but they are going to buy. Now, they're, they're probably not going to want to pay 125 for an orange. They're going to want to go in cheap. Or maybe they're just going to hold their guns because sometimes having a diversified portfolio is not the best strategy because, you know, some of those are going to be last. So maybe you just want to keep it tight and sell and buy 
uh, as and, and keep hold of this money. Okay, but they're not gonna they're not gonna buy or sell. So we're all gonna pick a card. These guys are gonna go for that one. Remember, these would be secret and revealed simultaneously. Okay, active player. Boom. Brown. They're gonna move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. These guys are gonna brown. One, two, three, four, five, six. And finally, we've got an orange at six. One, two, so you're gonna have to make up some ground. Three, four, five, six. So orange is still ahead, but look where Brown's come from. They've shot from here at 20 bucks, and now they're still in this column, valued at 110. Okay, very exciting. Okay, so we reveal. Well, each player takes a card from the top again. Now, this trade symbols come out that goes back in the bag and at the same time all the other actions that were out now go back in and the reason that is because it wants to encourage trading as you get rid of those other actions and it means more trades are happening rather than potentially the minus one coming out you know more so and that's pretty much it really you keep going you know buying selling and these are going to fluctuate i should add that when you actually get to the bottom of your deck you play out the last card in your hand because you might just have the one and then you'd reshuffle it and you start using that again and everyone should hypothetically be doing that at the same time as you get further up the first player to get in here and obviously these would be all shifted up you'll play out the end of that turn you will take the cash in hand and add up all the shares and their values. So, you know, this one has ended it there. So it's going to be 325. And you're literally looking around going, right, minus 40 for the eighth one, etc., etc. You tally up all your money from the share values. And you tally up your money hand. And whoever has the most money is the winner. And that is it, folks. This is a pure stock market game. There is a lot of luck with what actions you might acquire, but you're just having to really make the most of what is happening on the board. I guess if there's runaway leaders, well, maybe people aren't going to be buying it because it's so expensive and it's just sort of sitting there. But if someone sells it, it might be an opportunity for someone else to buy. And it's this interesting power play of there's only, there's always a scarcity of resources uh, or shares, should I say, because there's always one less than the number of players. I definitely think this game is for that higher player count. There's more activity, more going on, more chances to buy uh, more shares and, and have sort of different ownerships in, in the shares and play out these these cards as they as they come out. There we are, folks. Enjoy.